Hello everyone, my name is Eric Apia. I welcome you to Africa Digital Skills Conference 2020. Um, I work with Secure Eyes. Secure Eyes is a cyber security uh, company in Accra, Jowulu. Um, we deal with endpoint security, cyber security audit, and the rest. Um, once again, I welcome you to Africa Digital Conference 2020. Um, we are going to discuss cyber security, security awareness and training, the role of communication. Okay, um, so by the end of this session, um, participants will understand what cyber security is, um, what, what are the role of hackers and the impact they make on personnel and organizations as well. And uh, the, what we can do to curtail um, hacking and all those stuff. Thank you. All right, so what is cybersecurity? Uh, cyber security can be used interchangeably with information security. So um, information security is the process of enhancing the conf confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information through preventive and responsive strategies. That is Ning and others, 2013. Uh, cyber security is an ongoing effort to protect these network systems and all of the data from unauthorized use or harm. Uh, on a personal level, you need to safeguard your identity, your data, and your computing devices. At the corporate level, it is everyone's responsibility to protect the data from the, the organization's uh, to, to protect the organization's data, reputation, and customers. And at the state level, national security and the safety and well being of citizens are at stake. So basically, when we say cybersecurity, it's more or less like um, your door, your door. So uh, you, your door probably opens your room or your house. And you have the key to your to the door, but um, anybody with any extra key that can, however, open that door is an authorized person, an unauthorized person. You are the only authorized person to use that door into your house. If any, however, if anybody else uses that door, you probably have to give the person a key that symbolizes um, um, you have authorized the person to use the door to open. So um, what we are going to discuss so far will be about computing devices. So all the, all the computing devices that we have around the world, basically you have a, probably a laptop, a mobile phone, a desktop computer, or whatever a computer, uh, the computing device is. What, what we mean by cyber security is that um, if you own the, the, the phone or the laptop, you are the only authorized person to access the information on the la laptop or your computing device. Any unauthorized person uh, is probably not allowed, okay? So, um, we'll discuss in detail what, what it means by confidentiality, integrity, and availability. All right, so data classification. Um, data is classified into several, depending on um, what it is used for. So sensitive data. Okay, so sen sensitive data 
is data with the most limited access and requires a high degree of integrity. So as, um, government data, let's see, uh, phone, reco uh, phone records of um, government official, government contract, and all, they are sensitive data that, that are not supposed to be in the public. Uh, another example is uh, military information, tactical military information. These are sensitive data that are not supposed to be in the public. It's supposed to be safeguarded. So this data, this is typically data that would do the most damage to the organization, sh should it be disclosed. So like I said, the military data, government officials data is very, very sensitive. And um, confidential data, confidential data is data that might be less restric restrictive within the organization, but might cause damage if disclosed. So, for example, um, in an organization, confidential data is um, proprietary stuff, you know, things that an organization that wouldn't, wouldn't want that data to go outside to their competitors. All right, and then we have private data. Usually, com compartmental data that might not cause damage, but might, might must be kept private for other reasons. So these are data that are private. For example, my pictures on my phone, your pictures on your phone, stuff that you deem private shouldn't come out. Um, your your private calls and all the all of those things they are private to you they are private data you wouldn't want them to come outside into the public domain proprietary data these are data that data disclosed outside the organization on limited basis containing information that could impact an organization's competitive advantage so these are proprietary they belong to an organization and then we have the public. These are less sensitive data. So for example, the pictures I put on Facebook, the pictures you put outside, these are all public data. You have accepted that the public can view this particular data. So they wouldn't cause any um, harm if they are, because they're already in the public domain. So they wouldn't cause harm. All right. So, um, we spoke about the confidentiality, availability, and integrity. The CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. The CIA triad, it is very critical in cybersecurity. So, Volsams and Van Niekerk, 2013, posit that all information security efforts are founded on three principles namely the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. These principles are collectively known as the CIA triad. Confidentiality assures, ensures the privacy of data by restricting access to authentication through encryption. So confidentiality is basically uh, data must be confidential and it must be restricted. Only authorized people should be able to use the data. Integrity. Integrity assures that the information is accurate and trustworthy. So for example, if I'm sending an email to my boss or whoever, integrity here means that the information that I'm sending an um, that I'm sending to my boss should not be tempered with. It should be accurate. So the information that is sent here must be the same information that is received by whoever that is uh, re re receiving the information. Availability. Availability ensures that information is accessible to authorized people. So for example, the ATM, ATM machine, here, availability is such that as and when 
a person is goes to the ATM and then keys in the uh, pin code, the system should be available. The person, the system should be available to serve the person. The person should be able to use the system by authorized people as and when they need it. That's what, what we mean by availability. We will discuss in detail. So confidentiality is means privacy, basically. So com company policies should limit authorized workers to access to the information and ensure that this information is accessed by those authorized individuals. So if you are working in an organization, you are the boss or, or, or whatever, um, the information in the organization, not every information in an organization, um, government or whatever is, not every information is given to everybody within the organization. So it is, it is important that authorized people have access to that particular information. So people that are required to handle this particular thing are given that information to handle it. Those that don't have, um, those that are not required to um, handle that information, they are not given access. That is what we mean by confidentiality. All right, so integrity. Integrity is the accuracy, consistency, and trustworthiness of data during transit. So data must be unaltered and not motiv modified by unauthorized individuals. What we mean here is that, like I said earlier on, so um, uh, probably the financial person in, the, in one organization is sending financial statement, proposals, uh, whatever, to um, an, another person in another organization. It is important that the, the data that is sent is the data that must be received. Any modification in the middle will, 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 will hurt the integrity of the data. So unauthorized access must be avoided by file permissions and user access control. To avoid accidental modification by approved users, version control may be used. So what we mean here is that, um, let's say the organization is networked using a folder, company files folder and all that. File permissions are very, very necessary in the sense that permissions are given to people that are working on the, 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 the file or people that are authorized to use the file only. And any unauthorized person, even within the organization, is not given access. That is what we mean by um, file permissions. All right, so to recover any lost data, backups must be available. This is very, very critical. So the, you must always have backups of your personal data and the organizational data. And we have something called checksum. Checksum is what is used to verify the integrity of data that is sent via networks. So, um, for example, hashing can be used to verify data integrity during, these are um, very technical, but there are some bits of strings that are added to the, the, the bytes, the byte stream, such that it verifies after a message, they are, they, are, they are added before a message is sent. And then after the message is received, those numbers are used to verify whether the, the data has been tempered with. Check some, very, very key. So it is important that we have backups to, to our data so that we don't lose any data. All right, availability. Um, 
Availability here means that in detail, maintaining equipment, performing hardware repairs, keeping operating systems and software up to date and creating backups to ensure availability of the network and data to authorize users. Um, I'm sure you'll be frustrated if uh, you go to the ATM and then uh, the ATM machine is not working or probably you are doing an online bank transaction and it's, it, it, the, the service is not working. It's always down. You are, you are probably buying from Jumia or, or, or whatever online platform that you use in your, your, your country. And um, the moment you go online to shop, the system is not available for you to use. It causes a lot of frustration. So it is important that um, maintenance hardware, equipment, uh, we must maintain the equipment and the hardware, the service that are hosting these um, 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 files for people to use. We must ensure the software up to date such that the system is always available for, for users. All right, so we must also have plans to recover quickly from natural and man-made disasters. Um, I think cloud computing is taking care of this thing but in the local um, um, session or setting, um, the, the organizations or even personally, we must ensure that we have plans to recover um, data in case and, and make sure our system is back online in case um, the system goes offline or whatever. We must ensure that we have security equipment or software such as firewalls. Firewalls guard against um, unauthorized access to your computers. Um, so this will help guard against the downtime due to attacks such as denial of service. We will discuss that in detail. So denial of service occurs when attacker attempts to overwhelm resources so the services are not available to users. We will discuss that in detail. All right, so types of attackers. Types of attackers. Attackers are people or groups who for personal or financial benefit aim to exploit vulnerability. So um, we have different types of attackers. Uh, we will discuss this in detail. We will know, uh, we will, and we will probably try to localize it. In our, in our, we are having a lot of complaints about um, identity theft, Facebook impersonation, and the most uh, importantly, mobile money fraud in, our, in, our, in, our, in Africa, for example. Uh, we will discuss all of that. So we want to know and the attackers with their aim, what, what are they looking for, and all that. So from credit cards to product designs and everything with meaning, attackers are interested in anything. So uh, first of all, we have amateurs. The, these people are sometimes called script kiddies. These people have probably heard about hacking, and they've probably downloaded uh, one or two software they have no skill. So they are using existing tools on the internet to latch attack. They download one or two soft software and then they use these tools to launch the attack. These people usually do have no skill and then they are enabled by using these tools to launch attacks. Some of them are just curious. They are just curious. They, they want to demonstrate that to their friends that, oh, no, they are good. Um, they, want, they, can, they can be able to hack this machine or that. All right? So they are using basic, basic tools. 
but this can be very uh, devastating in terms of the attack. They think that they are using basic tools, but um, their, their, their basic tools can cause harm to organizations. All right, so the next type of attackers are the hackers. This is a group of attackers that break into, it, it could be an individual. They break into computers or networks to gain access. So um, we have the passive attack and the active attack. With a passive attack, they break in, they don't touch anything, but they just monitor what is going on on your machine or your system or your network. With an active attack, they break in and then they are actively um, taking data or deleting stuff or whatever. So depending on the intent of the breaking, these attackers are classified as white, gray, or black hats. These white hat attackers break into networks or computer systems to discover weaknesses so that the security of these systems can be improved. These are white hat hackers. So the white hat hackers they break into system, so um, penetration testers. So they will try to break into system. If it is possible, they disclose um, their procedure and then they disclose the vulnerabilities that are in the system. And this will help um, the organization patch up these systems before the, the black guys will come in to take anything. So this will help improve the, the, the systems. And then they, these break-ins are done with, yes, of course, they will ask the permission of the, the owner or the organization. On the other hand, we have the black hat attackers that take advantage of any vulnerability for illegal personal or financial or uh, political gain. So for, for black hat attackers, um, they are in to, to, to cause damage. It can be political, it can be financial, of course, financial motivation. It can be personal. They break into your system to steal from you. Uh, we've witnessed a lot of mobile money fraud. You send them, they, they trick you into sending them their money, the, your money. The moment you send them the money, they block you and all that. We are going to discuss all of that into detail. And then we have the gray hat attackers. These are people, these people are somewhere between the white hat and then the black hat. They may find vulnerabilities in the system. They may report the vulnerability if it, uh, uh, it goes with the agenda. But if the agenda or their motive is something else, they attack. All right, so these are the great hat attackers. And then we have organized hackers. Organized hackers include organizations of cyber criminals and activities, terrorists and state-sponsored attackers. So for example, um, a very well-known organized hacker is uh, hackers are the anonymous um, hackers. They are well known all around uh, all around the world. So um, some of their motives are political. They believe that they are going against the, the the top people and all that. So that is it. These are organized hackers. They are some of them are hack hacktivists. Some of them are terrorists. Some of them are state-sponsored uh, hackers. For example, China has an army of hackers. Um, cyber criminals are usually groups of professional criminals focused on control, power, and wealth. These criminals are highly sophisticated and organized, and they may, they may even provide cyber, cyber crime as a service to other criminals. So, for example, the, when you go to the deep web, you, you can go to the deep web to hire these hackers 
to do something to to cause damage um to whatever you want so they are there to as i said they, they provide service to to criminals and they are highly sophisticated and organized the highly sophisticated and organized so what are the types of threats that we face we have internal security threats internal security threats attacks can be originated from within an organization or from outside of an organization um, internal users such as an employee employee a contract partner can accidentally or intentionally mishandle confidential data that is how come it is important to treat employees very well because as they work with your data, they handle your data. They can even give your data to your competitors. So it is important, or they can plug in a USB device that can cause harm to your network or your computer, and it will disrupt your business. So it is important that you handle your employees well. Establish good relationships with your employees. All right. So these threaten the operations of internal service, service and network infrastructure devices. They facilitate outside attackers by infecting USB, by connecting infected USB into the corporate computer system. So accidentally too, not all of them are intentional. They may connect something to your um, computer or network, and they may even click um, a fictitious um, um, email that has been sent, and the, the email contains a malicious um, link. And then in, accidentally they click on it and your computer is infected, and then uh, it causes harm to your organization. All right, we also have external traits. External traits, you know, these are skilled or amateurs that can exploit vulnerabilities in your network or your computing devices or probably use social engineering to gain access. We discuss, we discuss social engineering. Um, um, someone can call your organization and then pretend to someone to, to be somebody within the organization. They can probably get information from the person's social media account, pretend to be someone within the organization, and then ask for data. And then the data can be, or the information that belongs to the organization can be given to these um, um, external security, external threats or attackers. These data can be given to them. So we are going to discuss all of that in detail and how um, communication can help to curb all of these things. All right, so security vulnerabilities. So um, we are going to discuss software vulnerabilities that are um, in software that we use. You know, software is the instructions given to the computer, all these Microsoft Word, everything that you use on your computer, comp uh, mobile device and all that, applications, apps, and all of that, they are all um, um, and software. And all of these can have vulnerabilities. When we say vulnerabilities, these are weaknesses in, in, basic, in basic terms, weaknesses that hackers can use to um, gain access to your computing device. So uh, vulnerabilities are usually introduced by errors in the operating system or application code, like I just said. Despite all the efforts companies put into finding or patching software vulnerabilities, it is common for new vulnerabilities to surface. It is very common. So uh, Microsoft, Apple, and other um, operating system producers releases patches. Or it is very important that organizations or personal people uh, you update your operating system because the, 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 the updates 
comes as a result of vulnerabilities. They write codes to patch these vulnerabilities that they've detected by the operating system uh, companies. So it is important that you regularly update your, 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 your operating system and application update as well, such as mobile brow uh, browsers, mobile apps, web service should be updated. All right, so uh, when we talk about vulnerabilities, um, there is this website that is like a database for um, vulnerabilities. Let's see, let's go there and see. All right, so um, exploit database. So with exploit database, um, this contains all of up-to-date vulnerabilities that are detected by hackers, um, penetration tested all over around the world. So you could see the platforms that are vulnerable as at uh, today's date. So it will help equip you patch these systems. It is very, very important. All right. Um, so that is exploit DB, exploit DB, exploit DB. All right, we can also have hardware vulnerabilities. Hardware vulnerabilities are often introduced by hardware design flaws. So these are flaws that come up with um, the hardware. It could be processor, it could be RAM, it could be any of the hardware, basically. So for example, it is essential uh, capacitors installed is very close to one another. It was discovered that due to proximity, constant changes applied to one of these capacitors could influence neighbor capacitors. Based on that design flaw, an exploit called Rohama was created by repeatedly rewriting re memory in the same address, the Rohama exploit allows data to be retrieved by from nearby ad address memory, memory cells, even if the cells are protected. So you could see that the hardware plays critical role uh, with data because whatever the application is doing goes on to the hardware memory. And the hardware memory can be intercepted, can be hacked, and data can be retrieved. All right, so now, now let's go to types of malware. What is malware? Malware essentially is short for malicious software. Malicious, malicious software. So malware is any code, any code that can be used to steal data by past access controls or cause harm to or compromise a system. All right, so malware is any code that can be used to steal data, bypass access or cause harm to. I believe that as you have used computers, you are, you are very familiar with how malware works. Sometimes your computer is freezing, your computer is overheating, um, a lot of things, your computer is restarting and all that. We'll discuss that in details. But um, all, we, we, we typically, we, we usually call all of these things, oh, I have a virus on my computer. But they are distinct. They behave differently. Let's look at them. All right. So we have the spyware. Spyware is a malware that is designed to track and spy on the user. So um, these spyware... They, they are installed on your machine and you don't even know they are installed. They are tracking your, your, your keystrokes, your keyboard, whatever you are typing. They are taking your camera pictures. Um, they are taking screenshots. They are taking your email passwords, everything. And they are being sent to the, um, the person who is organizing the attack. And usually the victim doesn't know about it. So the, the spyware often uh, takes keystroke 
and captures data. In an attempt to overcome security measures, the spyware will modify the security settings and it will pose as a legitimate software. All right, sometimes you can install, um, most of you that use cracked uh, software, be rest assured you have a spyware on your computer because the, 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 the most uh, cracks will, will tell you to disable your antivirus software and all, all of that. You are happy, you are, you, are, you, are, you are getting to use the software, but uh, unknown to you, the, 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 after installing the software or the cracked software, you have a spyware within. All right, we, we also have hardware. Hardware is uh, is is often um, installed on your machine. You, you you've down, probably downloaded a software that you think is is fine, but within it is contains an hardware. Hardware delivers advertisements. So most of you that use Windows machine, you could see that if you use Windows machine for a while, you are downloading stuff. You are you could see that uh, all of a sudden adverts are popping up on your screens and all of that. All of these things are hardware. They are not necessarily dangerous, but they could also contain spyware. All right. And these advertisements are generating uh, money for the attackers as well. All right. We have bots. A bot is a short word for robot. A bot malware is designed to automatically perform an action, usually online. They are mostly harmless until they are used by the, the attacker. I increasing use of malicious bots are called the botnets. Several computers infected with bots, which are programmed to quietly wait for commands provided by the attacker. So what this does is that with the bot, it attacks several computers. And these are patient, uh, commands that are patiently waiting for um, the uh, commands from the attacker. So the moment the attacker wants to unleash an attack on a system, he sends codes to all of these. So the, the, the bot will use all of these, the processing power, the memory, the process power of all of these infected machines to launch the attack. We, 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 will get, we will get to know more about that when we go to the DOA, denial of service attack, or distributed denial of service attack. And then uh, ransomware. Uh, these are malware that is designed to hold a computer system hostage or captive until payment is made, all right? So when a ransomware attacks your machine, your data is encrypted, and all you see on your screen is um, probably a Bitcoin address to pay money into before your machine is unlocked. Other than that, your data will wipe out. Imagine if this is an organization and this happens to your, your data or your computers or your network, this can disrupt your data or your organization processes. All right. But one thing that um, we must bear in mind that when you're attacked by ransomware, don't pay. It is advisable you don't pay because when you pay, you are enriching the attackers and thereby increasing the possibility of, because if it becomes more profitable for them, they will launch more attacks. They will even find more ways and means of launching more and more sophisticated attacks. All right? Um, some other versions of ransomware can take advantage of specific system vulnerabilities to lock down the system. Ransomware is spread by a downloaded file or some software vulnerability. Yeah. Scareware. This, this is a type of malware designed to persuade user into to take specific action based on fear. So um, 
for example, if you are downloading, if you are the type that is downloading stuff online, you, yeah, you can get a pop-up and then a new browser opens. Then you are scared. You get a message. Your computer is inf infected with virus. Um, click to download whatever, whatever to clean your... The moment you click on it, your virus is infected. Your machine is infected, sorry. All right. So it is important that we get this. These things are very important, especially with organizational. Organizations must know the risk. They, they must know um, um, the guidelines with regard to cybersecurity given to, to, to their employees. And it is important that communication plays a role in organization. It is not, uh, it is not um, um, good to leave everything to the IT department who are probably segregated. And then when there's a problem, we call them no. The IT department must be, be involved in the day-to-day -day activities of the organization, such that they, 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 they are probably um, um, communicating advising and then probably helping employ other employees or other staff on the critical role of these attackers and how to you know curb or prevent all of these things we have rootkit so rootkit is designed to modify the operating system to create a backdoor all right so attackers often use the backdoor access to access the computer remotely. So rootkit usually use, takes advantage of software vulnerabilities to perform privilege escalation and modify system files. It is also very common for rootkit to modify system forensics and monitoring tools. Make rootkits are mostly hard to detect. They are mostly hard to detect. So they usually create a backdoor for the attacker. So they go, they come into your computer, create a backdoor, and remain silent. Then the attacker can access your computer or your device. All right. Now virus. Um, a virus is a malicious executable code that is attached to other executable files, often legitimate programs. Most viruses require end user activation. All right, so, so usually viruses are attached to executable. The moment you click on that executable uh, 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 file or software, you are, you, are, you are infected. All right, then we have the Trojan horse. It's malware that carries malicious operations under the guise of desired operation. These Malicious code exploits the privileges of the user that runs it. All right. So, so Trojan horse malware. So usually, they give you um, you have downloaded a software to do this thing. It will do exactly what you intend, but beneath it, it is executing a different code, different from. Um, um, its desired operations. And Trojan Horse differs from virus because it binds itself to non-executable files such as audio files, images, and games. Worms. Worms. Worms are malicious code that replicate themselves independently, exploiting vulnerabilities. So when, malware, when worms attack when they get into your networks, they replicate as fast as they can to attack other computers, other devices on the same network. All right, so worms are responsible for some of the most devastating attacks on the internet. In 2001, the code read worm infected 658 servers. Within 19 hours, the worm had infected over 300,000 servers. That's the power of a worm. It infects, it replicates rapidly to infect other computers. 
Right. So man in the middle uh, attack. Man in the middle attack allows the attacker to take control of a device without the user's knowledge. So they are they are in the middle. Information is sent, they receive it, and then they send their information to the person. They they intercept the the information. With that level of access, the attacker can intercept and capture. Uh, information before relaying it to its intended destination. All right. So, example, it's a financial information. There are a lot of people doing this thing, man in the middle attack. So, what they do is that um, they probably hack um, the email of this billionaire or rich people. And then um, they, they study the email, they study the email, the transaction the person is making. All right. And then uh, at the point where the transaction has gotten to um, payment, where he's supposed to send um, bank account details for payments to be made, these attackers rather send their. Um, banking account details. And the victim wouldn't find out until days later before. All right, so what are the symptoms of malware? How do you know that you are, uh, it is important that you have antivirus on your machine, but these are typically symptoms, um, uh, behavior of computers that you know, no, this thing is malware. So, for example, um, there's uh, an increase in CPU usage, CPU usage. How do you know this? Um, let me go to um, Windows. Let's go to, so you can use this. All right, so tax manager on the Windows, you can go to tax manager and then you could see high CP, 100%. Can you see it? 45%. All right, so if you are probably not using anything on your machine and you are seeing a high CPU usage, this percentage over here, you could probably check the processes that are using the CPU. If it is not a system, if you are not probably using any application and um, then there, there, is, there is something suspicious going on. All right. There is a, so when there is an increase in that CPU usage of a process that you are not even running over here, there will be an increase in the computer, a decrease in computer speed. You could also find that out that your computer freezes or crashes often. And there is also a decrease in web browsing speed. All right. Uh, you could also see that uh, uh, there, there, there are problems with network connections. Files are also modified when files are deleted. And the presence of unknown files, like shortcuts, that desktop icons, and the rest. And they are unknown processes. So for example, the processes here, you could see that there is Microsoft Photos executable. Um, if I find out that the um, processes here are unknown and they have high CPU, it is, there is a probability that there is virus. It's a virus. And programs are turning off and reconfiguring their cells. And email is being sent without the user's knowledge or consent. Okay. Social engineering. Uh, social engineering is an attack that attempts to manipulate individuals into performing actions or divulging or giving out confidential information. Um, they often rely on people's weaknesses, their feelings. 
So they use fear and emotions and all that invoke all of these things. We will discuss this in detail because the mobile money fraud across the, 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 our continent is, is, is overwhelming. The people will call you and then threaten to, to close your account or whatever, except that they, they probably send you a fake um, message that you have received an amount of money and then call you to send it back on, unless on, unless um, on you, you, your, 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 your account is closed. Then in the midst of fear, you send them the money only to realize that it was not a real money. It was just a message, a flash account. And then you send them your real money. So this is evidence of fraud. Someone was there and the, um, this thing, the person received this thing that authorized payment of 300 CDs from your account to GTB bank, whatever. And then the person said, I just received this on my phone. Has anyone experienced this before? You understand? This is uh, an example of mobile money fraud. Another one to social engineering. The um, Israelite also complained that this number called, he said the person is a scammer. And then uh, the person is attend, att the person attempted to scam him. All right. So there are several evidence of fraud. How do we overcome this fraud? It is important that when you, you receive a message like that or you receive a call like that, pause. Because at that moment, they put in fear in you. Pause and then call a friend to explain. Call a friend. Call somebody you know. At that moment, you can't make a decision based on the fear. Pause and call a friend. The person can think clearly and give you the right information. If you trust yourself, you end up sending, because some of these attacks are very sophisticated. You need to call a friend. Communication, the role of communication. In order to keep mobile money fraud, when you receive a call, call a friend. Because they put fear on you. So the moment you call a friend, their, fr their friend doesn't have their fear. Their friend can think clearly and tell you, no, this thing is fraud. All right? All right. So there is this issue of identity theft. A lot of people are complaining, Tyron. They are complaining of people creating pages in their names, people creating um, uh, uh, profiles in their names, using their names to scam their friends, their people in their networks. A whole lot of things are going on. Scammers, scammers, scammers. People, a lot of people, uh, things are going on. All right. Someone can even create um, 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 identity, your, your own identity, your own profile on Facebook and use it to uh, take loan from your friends. Okay, and um, I received this from one of our customers that this page, they have threatened to, you know, this is what they do. They put fear in you. So they gave the, the person a link to click on. Other than that, the, their page has been, uh, the, their page has been reported by others for fraud. So they must verify their account. Other than that, the, their page will be taken down. You see, the person was not thinking clearly. The person was scared. But when the person called me, I was able to detect that, no, this thing is fraud. Right? Because Facebook will not doesn't have anything like page security and all of that. And see, see below, they have say, regard, best regard, Facebook Corporation, Facebook Safety Team. You see how they, they, this, these attacks are done? All right, so we have other forms of scam. And um, we have the FBI reportedly in November 1st announced charges against 60 defendants in $300 million nationwide telemarketing fraud scheme. You could also have a Netflix. This is a phishing account. 
phishing attack. Okay. Uh, why is the need for cyber security? Um, in I think around October, it was discovered that hackers broke into mobile money systems of Pegasus, Pegasus software in Uganda. And um, these people are in charge of mobile money at, for MTM mobile money, Airtel and Stambik back. And they were able to steal, I think, billions of shillings, of Ugandan shillings. All right. In Ghana, we have um, nine people were in court over 326 million Ghana cities, UMB scam of bank transfers. Okay, all these are, th th this is the need for cybersecurity. We must be able to curb all of these attacks. Okay, we have six busted over. Uh, 46.1 million Ghana cities bank fraud. All right, so phishing. Phishing is when a malicious party sends fraudulent email dis disguised as being from legitimate trusted for, uh, source. So they send you um, a fraudulent email or even message to be for example, with the mobile money, they send you a message um, supposedly to be coming from mobile money, but not uh, really. They use their, their own numbers and all of that. So it is important you take a critical look. Some time ago, I got this email from PayPal. And this is phishing. It looks real. It so looks real. All right. They, they have given everything here looks real like PayPal but it's a phishing account. This is fake. And a, a click to this, um, uh, their, their, their link will link you to a similar look of PayPal, but will take your PayPal details. Okay. And then we have vulnerability exploitation. Okay. Gada, we have gather information about the target system, one of the pieces of relevant information. Um, when the target operating system and version is known, the attacker looks for any uh, vulnerability specifics. When the vulnerability is found, the attacker looks for previously written exploit to use. All right. DOS, denial of service attack. These types of attack, uh, attacks are uh, typically on networks. So it's a network attack. Th this happens when um, a, a network or a, a, a server is given an overwhelming quantity of traffic such that it will not be able to process. All right. Therefore, it breaks down. OK. Advanced persistent threat. This is APT. All right. Um, so they consist of multi phase long term operations. These are network espionage. These are industrial attacks or state sponsored attacks. Okay. Protecting your data and privacy. To protect your data, you must keep your firewall on. You must use antivirus and anti-spyware. Manage your operating system. Use unique passwords for each online account. Encrypt your data. Back up your data. Do not share too much on social media. The role of communication, like I said, when you have uh, any um, suspicious email message, mobile money, fraud, and all of that, Communicate, talk to people, call a friend, all right? In organizations, there must be constant communication between the IT staff and the other employees. So by research by Ahen and Gamel 2018 reveals that prevention of security breaches is achieved through by structures of domination and clarity in communicative action mediated by a reserved 
communication trait. Response to communication information security breaches is achieved by structures of signification and legitimation, interdepartmental collaboration and knowledge-rich communication mediated by outspoken communication traits. So it is important that we communicate. Thank you.